dragons are the guardian of the treasure. The treasure is making our dreams, our ideas coming to life. And to be able to go to this treasure, we need to make friends with a dragon. I think we as a, as a culture, especially the Western culture, we experience really hard time. Things are changing rapidly. In one hand, we have access to great education, amazing food, technology, cell phone, internet. But in the same time, you see many things that are not working. Many systems, old systems that are starting to collapse. And many people that experience their life in an unhappiness way. They are not happy. They have jobs, well, great. They have amazing cars. They have the best cell phones, but, but they're keeping themselves not happy. I believe that modern society is very much based on a win-lose culture, which is very much about like, for having people that have a lot, many people have to have little. And we have been engaging with this type of culture since a long time. The more I participate in, in workshops, in experiences like Dragon Dreaming, the more I see that there is a, a movement going on around the world, that there are so many people connecting, engaging, co-creating things together uh, and creating a new reality. We cannot solve our old problems with old tools. We need to find a more human creative way so we can start creating new solution. We create so much. We create systems and cities and train and airplane and science and medicine. And so for sure, we have the capacity also to change the course of humanity and what we call the great turning, this moment when we realize, guys, something doesn't work here. I feel the great turning is talking about, hey, enough. The reason we're doing this ceremony is to separate us from what happened before we came here to what is our in intention for the next 10 days. My expectations uh, are to really dive deep into that practice and to see how it keeps a bit of the magic because I think that's the really important thing is that we don't go too much into our own heads. I'm looking for more tools to uh, apply in my day-to-day -day work in Africa. I would like to find in this method my way uh, to move my ideas, to to push them. <laughs> I want to explore and learn dragon dreaming methods so as to be able to work uh, and inspire more young people in my local community in project planning, in the changes. Like in a swimming pool, to just um, uh, jump in the swimming pool and take a risk. My expectation about this program is uh, to uh, learn how to better uh, how to better communicate with uh, people. 
I really think that everything is connected and I can get something um, good from uh, the experiences of others. I need tools. Tools. I expect tools. To find, uh, I don't know, methods, tools or possibilities to collaborate with other people. The question for today is, what are we going to achieve by using the Dragon Dreaming method? And the answer for today is, we'll see. In England, similar, there's a bit of a mix. Uh, usually, it's a big hug. Yeah! Hi! <laughs> big squeeze! <laughs> but the most formal, yeah. I'm very serious. <laughs> Hello. I'm also Hello. very I'm serious. Sarah. Hello. Nice to meet you. I like beer hugs strong. <laughs> How do you greet in Lithuania, in your country? With legs. With legs? Show yeah. me, please. <laughs> like One this? Okay. Leg and labas. You say and labas? Yeah. Labas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like this, yes. Oh, wow. God. <laughs> cool, I like France. <laughs> I study business management and I worked in this industry for eight years and I was very, very unhappy. And I think I was very unhappy because this world didn't connect with who I am as a human being. And so I decided to quit my job. I decided to sell all the stuff that I had and I went to travel around the world. I found that there was another way of doing things, of engaging with nature, of collaborating with other human beings. And this process is, in this moment, is where I found Dragon Dreaming. And I went to India, I went to Nepal, I went to Brazil, to Peru, to Europe, looking and slowly meeting more and more people that are doing things differently. People that are doing projects in Indian villages, trying to support women, empowerment, people that are working with farmers in Brazil try to turn their production into more green, more environmental. People in Peru that involving healing, meditation and education together. And I, I was like observing and saying, wow, there is so many amazing projects happening in the world. So many people involved in what I believe it's one of the greatest movement in human history. And during this quest, I found Dragon Dreaming. And I said, wow, Dragon Dreaming is really helping people to work together. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Sorry to do open like this. Yes, I just do it. Okay, okay, okay. You pull in. The founder of Dragon Dreaming, his name is John Croft, and he created this tool in collaboration with his wife, Vivian Elanta, and they kept doing projects in Australia uh, for some years until Vivian Elanta passed away, and John arrived to Europe, and he started transmitting this, this tool to the world. And the idea of Dragon Dreaming came with the understanding what we can learn from the Aboriginal people and how we can embrace some of their practices into the Western culture life. And in the same time, how we can help more people in the Western culture realize what really makes them happy and create a process, a practice, that in one hand it's ancient and taking the inspiration from the Aboriginal time, and the other hand it's very practical because Western people required practical action. So it has this perfect balance of logic and emotionality, and rationality and playfulness, creativity and also logical thinking. No one's winning. Ah, she's good. <laughs> Who won? Uh, they're still playing. See, competition is, is it's important in our society. <laughs> now I invite you to play the same game. Okay, same, same. 
but with a win-win approach. <laughs> okay, okay, what is going on? So what is happening? Stupid. Boring. Interesting. Boring. Isn't it challenging when something is difficult? It's challenging because you don't know how to do it. Let's say our first impulse is like to compete, to be the first, to run faster, okay? But when we're working into teams and when we want to create this culture, sometimes we need to go slower. Sometimes we won't understand a thing. Under all the methodology, all the processes, there is ethics. How we should work together and for what? And the ethics is talking about the culture of win, win, win. We're talking about a personal win, how I can develop myself as human being. We're speaking about community win, how we can construct, build communities that can support the individual in his process. And how we can build the win for the planet. So we're understanding that our action have a reaction. Whenever we work in groups, whenever we were applying the Dragon Dreaming methodology, we try to keep this in mind, the win-win-win culture. Is this action good for myself? Is this action good for both of us? Is this action good for the planet as a whole? And then the answer, it's different. So there are three magic tools in Dragon Dreaming. The first one is to trust yourself. The second one is to trust the group. And the last one is to trust the process. The Western society teaching us always try to go to the top. Even if you need to step on other people, even if you need to push them, if we really want to shift the culture and start solving the problem, we cannot try to solve them with the same perception of how we should work together. Therefore, we're aiming to shift our culture into more circular one. When still there is people with different responsibilities, different skills, but the goal is to make the circle bigger, is to make everybody win. Many times when we're going into this process, there is a lot of things that we don't know. There is new challenges, and this is why we, we sing in Dragon Dreaming what we call the pizza of knowledge. And the pizza of knowledge working very simply. There is thing that we know. There is thing that I don't know. But the big challenge is thing that we don't know that we don't know. If we start to value the diversity, the different life experience, the different culture we're coming from, the different education that we have, our inspiration. We can start slowly seeing things that we don't see. And this is one of the main practices in Dragon Dreaming, how we can see things that we don't see by accessing this collective intelligence, the collective knowledge that exists here in the room. Value each person, value each experience, and encouraging people to share them. Please, if you feel like it's time to share it with them, if you have a new with them, please say, aha! So what is an aha moment for you? What is the reaction you're getting? 
surprised, like discovering something new, right? Aha moments are contagious, okay? So if you share them, if you say, oh, I had this aha moment, and you share what it is, maybe the, the next person goes like, oh, me too. And then you have, oh, yes, I had another one, another one. And suddenly, like, you have thousands of aha moments happening. And collective intelligence is built on sharing many aha moments. To be able to innovate, we need to create a creative space. And creative space is happening by letting people to feel comfortable with who they are, to express themselves. And this is what is the great turning, and this is how it connected with Dragon Dreaming and the win-win-win culture. Because we are deeply understanding that we are all connected, and the way we're doing things, and the reason, the why we're doing things, is the essence, it's the basic. What we need now is we really need collective and systemic leadership. And I just want to encourage you or empower you to think that you all have these qualities inside you. And you are not the victorious warrior, but you are people that are connected to yourself and that are connected to your communities. And from that power, you can bring change into the world. And I love the, the etymology of the word leader. So it's the one that carries the burden for the community. So I think that the Dragon Dreaming as a tool and as a methodology is really helping people to see that they have a gift inside that they can give to the world. It's, uh, it happens in the jungle. There is a big fire and all the animals are just uh, escaping, uh, leaving the, the forest. All, but uh, not one. A little a ming bird who is uh, getting water with a, I don't know the name in English, <laughs> with a, his mouse, and uh, suddenly um, a big animal says to, he, to him, but what are you doing? You're so small. You will not uh, switch off the fire. It's ridiculous. And the little bird uh, answered to him, yeah, for sure, I will not switch off the fire. And at the same time, I'm doing my part in this world. And for me, that's very important because that's sure that one human can, cannot change the world. And at the same time, he can just do his own part. What we're going to do now, it's a, a tradition for many indigenous tribes. We call it a vision quest. The vision quest practice coming from Native American people, but also familiar with Aboriginal people. The goal of the vision quest is to find what is their role in the tribe. There is a beautiful forest that you can go and ask yourself the same question we had before. What is my role in the great turning? During the process, I, I, I could see it clearly. Where is my heart 
leads to. Everything was possible and I was trusting a lot in myself in this moment and it was a very good, a very comfortable feeling. I have, like, I had a lot of experience just in one hour, you know, it, it was like uh, up and down all the time. And I had many answers. <laughs> it wasn't just one answer. When I opened my eyes, I saw uh, different species of trees, different stages of the age. Uh, and my first thing is, this is the time for you, Camille, to be not only a branch of the tree, this is the time to be a trunk of the tree for other branches. But that was so strong. And I also I, I had this very strong feeling that, okay, you are not alone. You can, you know, I don't know the word, to touch the tree and the tree supports you. And then nature supports you and says, I'm here for you. I really spent a good time when I was in the forest doing an exercise that called in French butterfly is like uh, you put your hand in this way and you clap you're clapping by this way and it allows you to keep the good energy or if you have bad energy you can do it and you whoosh 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 boing so the traditional project management tools are very much focused on the left side of the brain, so they're very rational, and which is good. Uh, but on the other hand, you also need space for, for creativity, for playfulness, for uh, emotion sharing, and I think that Dragon Dreaming or the tools of Dragon Dreaming provides this good balance and good equilibrium between the right side of the brain, which is more feminine and more creative and more chaotic, and the left side of the brain, which is much more rational, logic, and we need both these two energies to go together. Every project starts with the dream of an individual, of a person. In the other axis, in front of the individual, we have the environment, the collective, the group, the world. And these two pieces are very, very important for every project. When the project starts, it's very about my ideas, my dreams. And when it starts to develop, it gets more collective, public, and in relation to the world. The other axis of these quadrants that you see here, for every project, we have a lot of theory in the beginning of a project. So when we start, everything is a lot about ideas and it's a lot about the mind, no? And emotions as well. <laughs> and when it starts to develop, it gets more into the practice. And so we say in Dragon Dreaming that the first step of every project, it's called the dreaming phase. And it's very much about me and how my group of friends or colleagues think that this project should be. You know how many dreams we have per day? How many ideas? There is a calculation, apparently. 60,000 around. We can spend all our lives in the dreaming phase and not really do anything. So then we need the courage and the motivation to cross this threshold and move together to the next phase. And what do you think planning is? Sometimes this phase can be challenging, but sometimes it can be also a lot of fun because we start like to materialize and we start to see a bit more what our dream was about. We start to see, oh, this is the way how we're gonna make it possible. What is the next phase? Doing. I'm not gonna explain what doing is because I think we all know. I'm gonna move into the next phase. And what do you think celebration is? Enjoying. Reflecting, exactly. 
Celebration is very much about reflection, about valuing what we have done, what we have learned, what we have achieved. So if you were to ask yourselves now, where do you think is your comfort zone? Like, where do you normally tend to be? Tend to be more, like, react more as a dreamer, or as a planner, or as a doer? These four stages are present in everything that we see in nature. This is how nature works, and this is how human beings work. We need these four energies. We have people that are more dreamers, people that are more planners, people that are more doers, and some people are more celebrators. And to find the equilibrium in anything, we need these profiles, we need these four archetypes, we need these four different types of people. Because if not, we say in Dragon Dreaming that our project won't be sustainable. and start to pay attention to your breathing. We use a tool we call Pinakari, which is coming from the Aborigines, and it means deep listening. Pinakar is magical. There is where you see like how, how human beings connect on a different level, on a deeper level. This invitation of working with silence is the biggest dragon, is the biggest challenge that we all have. And then at the same time, it has produced the most positive effect because you start like to engage with your team members, with your colleague from a different level. So not so much from the brain, but more from the heart. It's a totally different experience. When I speak from my mind, blah, 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 so, ma so many words, so many ideas. But when I go deeply inside yeah, and I breathe, I just connect with the source. And I'm not an individual anymore. I'm not lonely in my actions and my dreaming, but I could feel more other people the needs, I could feel myself better, more truly, and uh, see more clearly what is needed to be done. I didn't practice meditation at all in my life. Uh, these 30 seconds of uh, cal cal calm down and trying to uh, focus on uh, my question is a very great tool. I'm impressed. I was talking with uh, fighter vegan and uh, first, uh, uh, first uh, our discussion was uh, blah, 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 blah. After Pinakari, we look deep into our eyes and start listening, not only waiting for another blah, blah, blah. A dreaming circle is a process that we're doing when we want to create a collective dream. To be able to create a collective dream, the individual dream must die. So how are we doing a dreaming circle? First, we're sitting around the table. OK? We're working in Dragon Dreaming, and I think we talk about it a lot with generative question. We have a question that's guiding us in the process, in the dreaming circle. The question we're going to work here is, what 
should this project be like? So we can say, we or I, so we can say it's been the best spending of my time and energy. So we're starting with the generative question that we have. We're doing a pina curry, and then we start sharing our dream. How are we working together? And how are we dealing with our fears of working together? And how are we stepping a little bit from the rational way of thinking and connecting also what I call the leadership of the heart? Understanding that not everything is logic, not everything is need to be understood and being solved by our amazing mind. There is also heart, there is also emotion, there is also a place for human connection. <laughs> Are you comfortable? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Coffee, beer, something. Maybe we could do the training here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, slowly, slowly we going back. Going back slowly. Yeah. Ooh, wow. very good. Fix it. Camel. <laughs> Today and tomorrow, we're going to give you two tools to help you in the planning. Okay. So the first one is what we call objective setting. So an objective for me is something, so if I look at, for example, that I want to climb the Everest mountain, the objectives are the things, the important things I'm going to have to do in order to reach my final goal. So are the big stops that I need to do to reach that point. And I put these lines under these flags because for me an objective can be broken down into tasks. So there are many tasks, but there is kind of a main goal, main objective behind all the tasks that allow us to achieve that objective, that flag, okay, that we're putting in the mountain. So by creating the objective, we're more connecting ourselves to what is real, what is practical, but still holding the energy of the dream and, and the vision in the same time. So from my perspective, it's a lot of time, which object, if we're gonna put all, and all the energy on it, will bring energy to all the rest. Think about the snowball effect. We'll generate a movement, a snowball effect, and we start moving all the rest of the objectives. So a spider web, but I like to call it also a board game. And this is basically a caravert. Okay, what you see here. That we're gonna create tasks that will allow this objective to happen. So basically here we're gonna have a collection of different actions that we need to do in order to achieve this. Very simple, okay? We have energy here, right? We're gonna start to do it. And how is the energy flow? and how it's working, and what is the root. So this is creating what we call the song line. Now we have line and connection, and we can understand it in different level. One level of understanding is like what is the relationship with them, mm. how they supporting each other. I experienced something very special because I see how 
those structures based on domination, control and hierarchy are dying inside of me. Uh, and they didn't expect this process to go so deep. To me, the powerful moment was where, when I found out those three basic questions, actually, that we are building the Dragon Dreaming around, which is, uh, is it good for myself? Is it good for community? And ultimately, is it good for the world? It's really important to go through all three levels to see if what we want to do is really needed in the world. Because basically what we, what we observe is we are executing lots of projects only to satisfy our own ego. Those are new for me, the, the dreaming circle, even though it's, it's quite a simple process. Uh, the, like, the enforcement on the dream space is, uh, is something that, that I find very, very powerful. And one that I can see using in my work, uh, but also in my relationships. Um, it's a, it feels like a holistic planning method, which is nice. It's very difficult for me to work uh, uh, in the team because I want to, my ideas to be implemented first because I believe in them so strongly. So this struggle and dreaming process showed me that, okay, there is a lot of wisdom in, uh, and power in other people's ideas and minds and sharings. Today we experienced this process, which was a very beautiful experience to see that there is such a richness in the in this collective uh, dreaming and uh, we can just grow our dream and uh, the dream becomes more stronger, more powerful if all the people make an input in it. When one piece of the system collapses, the other can collapse as well. And this is what is happening in some way to our world, you know? We're seeing like different pieces of the system collapsing, but we're still not doing anything. Or we're not doing enough, I would say. Okay, so we're having all these alarms, social, environmental alarms. We're connected to this bigger system that is the world and we're not really doing much to change it. If you want to change something, you just have to start with yourself. Quite often we have this feeling that we don't like our environment and we'd like to do something about it. But we're just complaining without actually doing anything. The key thing is to start doing anything. If many people do it, we have this critical mass that will make the great turning possible, actually. So this is what's happening right now in the world. Everything is so fresh. And we are still here, but uh, then when, you, when we come back home, we start doing, because now we are still dreaming. I feel really good. I feel really good. I feel like it's been a real gift. We always have so much more to learn. So yes, a lot about the framework, a lot about myself, a lot about my, my, where I am in my life right now. Dragon Dreaming, for me, it's a lot about practice of love. Because when you want really to work with other people, you need really to trust them. And you need really to love them, even if they are not perfect and they are not perfect. There is just love, connection, care. Like most of the human beings, we are interested in the same thing. But you just like need to sit around the fire and work and talk and and try to connect with these people on a deeper level and try to find that connection. And then we're all the same. We're not so different. Right now in a time when Dragon Dreaming is like being more and more embraced by more organization and more 
kind of what we call the system. So we start seeing this change growing and growing more. And in the same time, the need to develop the methodology more. Whenever you want to share Dragon Dreaming with the world, be aware that this is an um, open source tool. It's a life. It can change. You can adapt it to your needs. Each of us has uh, their different, you know, uh, spices and, and magic uh, to transmit Dragon Dreaming. So I think that's the, what is important, that you keep open to whatever happens in the present moment. It's about finding the entrance and finding the entrance, finding the people that will be willing to play with you because it's also about playing and fun and not take everything too seriously all the time. Because yes, things are very seriously, but also if we can be playful, also we can bring a smile, we can open people's heart to try things differently. And we know there is so many reasons to do things differently today when we look around us and we see the amount of problems that we have. week of my life.